Hello everyone, Sharanya PS here. Welcome back to the session. In this video lecture, I will be dealing about pointers, pointers to pointers and how this preprocessor directives can be used. It comes under module 5 of the subject C programming for problem solving. First, what is meant by a pointers? Why we need to make use of this pointers? Pointer is a variable whose value is the address of another variable. That is, this pointer will hold address of some other variables. These are all acts like a container to store the address of some other variables. So, this pointer contain the memory address as their values. And if you look into some diagram here, the address that we refer here is a memory address. That address will be present in some other variables. That is what we refer as a pointer. In simple terms, in real world, if we refer, if I store our college address in some other location, then that Location will be indirectly refers to college address. That is what we refer as a pointers. How this pointers can be declared? Pointers should be declared before they are used as we followed with arrays, strings and structures. The stru uh, syntax used here is first we have to mention the data type and the pointer name. Pointer name is nothing but simple variable name as we followed and here we could observe one special symbol that we call it as a asterisk symbol or star symbol or pointer symbol which is the special symbol will make this pointer name as a actual pointer. With the example here it says integer star p. This indicates this pointer to an integer that is nothing but here it will contain the pointer value which is of a integer data type and next one float star f f is a pointer name star refers to that it is a pointer float is the data type that is here we create a pointer to the floating point values. Next is initialization of a pointer. It is the process of assigning an address to the pointer variable. With the definition, we observe that pointer is a variable which will hold the address of some other variable. In the initialization of the pointer, we will store that address to the pointer variable. The Syntax which is used for initialization of pointer is pointer name and equal to and here we are using a special symbol called ampersand and then variable name. Here ampersand refers to the address and if you look into the example integer a equal to 10. A is the variable name, regular variable which will contain the integer data type, integer values, integer data type and it stores 10 as the value. Now in the next step the pointer variable is declared. Pointer name is p or the pointer variable name is p and int is the data type. So this will contain a integer data type, integer value. Now after declaring the pointer, next step is to initialization of a pointer variable. That is pointer variable name is p. So in that p, we have to store the address of some other variable. That is here we perform that by mentioning p equal to ampersand of a. In the sense, this a variable's address we are storing in the P. This is what we are doing with this statement. Now, the star P 
P will be containing the address of this A variable. We'll see all these with example in upcoming slides. Now, this is just an example how we can initialize a pointer. If we look into the example uh, image here, PTR equal to ampersand A. That is address of A, we are referred with the PTR variable. Now, if we look into the example here, A is a variable which will holds the value 10 and which contains the memory location as value 1024. That is nothing but the address of A. So, here we could observe three different values. That is, A is a variable name, 10 is the value of that variable and 1024 is the address of that variable. With the statement PTR equal to ampersand A, what happens? With the, just with the PTR, there will be one variable PTR and which will contain some address. By mentioning PTR equal to ampersand A, we are storing the address of A variable to PTR. Now, what it happens, PTR will contain 1024. And PTR is having the address as 1000. Now, this PTR is actually pointing to the variable A. That is what we refer as a pointers. That is indirectly it is connected to the A variable. A is having the address 1024. We have stored this 1024 in the pointer variable. So, indirectly this pointer PTR, what we have defined here is pointing to a variable. That is what we refer as a pointers concept. Now, if we look into the example here, we have mentioned float x and the float star px. Your float x is a, x is a variable name and for that we have created a pointer by the name load star px. Please note here we can mention the star soon after defining the data type or soon prior to the variable name that is px. And uh, we have stored the value x equal to 6.5 and this is what we have mentioned as a, a pointed declaration and this statement will perform pointer initialization that is px equal to ampersand x that is px will hold now address of this x variable. If we look into the diagram this float x will contain uh, the value what we are referring as a 6.5 with the x equal to 6.5 and the px is a pointer to a float type it would contain an address of the load type of object. Now, with the statement px equal to ampersand x, we are storing the address of x into px. The uh, address of x is like any hexadecimal values. Randomly here in the example purpose for uh, better understanding, I will be referring some integer numbers. Uh, it is uh, referring to the uh, hexa decimals or uh, in a format what we are referring as a address. The here uh, would assign to px. The address will be referred to px. This is what we refer as a uh, pointers in this example. So here we have come across two different uh, operators one is star and one more as a ampersand the content of the memory location referenced by the pointer is obtained using the star operator that is also called as a dereferencing pointer and uh, star px here refers to the value of x that is nothing but 6.5 we'll take it as an example now here i equal to 3. It is an integer data type. Now, 
address of i if i refer it is referred to the address what is present with respect to the i variable now if i mention star i that is nothing but the value stored in the i variable here in this example it is 3 here if we observe i that is a star i will fetch me the value 3 and address of i will fetch you the value x 1100 c this is what the difference between ampersand and star in simple terms ampersand refers to the address of a variable and star refers to the value stored in that address D, uh, this uh, star is also called as a dereference operator and ampersand is ref, uh, is also called as reference or address operator now if we look into the example program for pointer we have used uh, with the main begin with the main and here we are using a as a variable which is initialized with value 10 and which is of a integer data type now if we pictorize this uh, int a equal to 10 initialization statement 10 is a value store which has a memory location 1024 and a is a variable name which we refer now I am declaring the pointer variable that is int star ptr. ptr is the pointer name. Now, when I define like this, it will create a memory location 1028 randomly. Say for example, and ptr is a variable name and which is nothing but a pointer variable that is it will hold some address in the next step that is we are doing that by defining the that is initializing the pointer that is ptr equal to ampersand of a this ampersand of a is nothing but address of a address of a is here 1024 now 1024 will be stored in this pointer variable if you look into the diagram here, ptr is a pointer variable and which is having the memory location 1028 and the value stored in that is a 1024. That is nothing but the address of the pointer variable, uh, address of a variable a. This is what we uh, mentioned with respect to the pointers. When we define any of the pointer, there will be mandatory two steps. One is defining the pointer and next step is initializing the pointer. And if we print the values of all these with a printf statement, here we are printing A. What it prints? What is the value of A? It is not. Here is 10. And if we print ampersand of A, what it is going to print? The address of A here in this example it is 1024. And next, with as we observed in the previous slide, there's uh, if we want to refer to the value stored in the pointer, then we have to make use of a dereferencing pointer that is nothing but star operator. Here, if we look into the example. This pointer, if we refer directly, the value stored here is 1024. We are interested into the value actually stored under 1024. That is nothing but 10. If we want to refer like that, then we have to mention star ptr. Now, if I mention star ptr, it will be referring to the value stored in the variable. That is ptr variable will be having the value that is 10. And if we print just ptr what it will print? It will print the address that is currently we have set the address of a it is 1024 that will be printed as a value. This is how the pointer will work. First step we have set some value here and then declared the pointer 
and uh, here with the next step we have initialize the pointer and these are the different uh, statement we have written here to differentiate between the values that is getting printed with the variables and the output if you observe 10 10224 10 and 1024 will be displayed we'll see now one example program and we'll predict the output what it will display here a equal to 10 and b equal to 10 is initialized with the integer data type and here two pointers are declared which is of a integer a pointer once again and uh, here integer pointer refers to it will be pointing to the integer values now we are uh, initializing this p1 pointer p1 equal to ampersand a and with this statement p1 and uh, here ampersand of a refers to 1024 will be stored in p1 and uh, with the p2 equal to ampersand b it will store the value that is uh, B's address is 1028 that will be stored in P2 and which contains the actual address as 1056 and when we print the A variable what it will print it is the value of A that is nothing but 10 will be printed now if I print the P1 what it will print what is the content now with the statement the P1 will have the value that is address of a it is nothing but 1024 and if we print star p1 that is p1's content will be printed that is value present in the p1 1024 is a value and its content that is nothing but 10 and next with the just displaying p2 it will display 1028 once again and star p2 will display the value stored in the pointer p2 that is 15. This is how the different pointer variables can be used to refer to the memory locations and the values stored under those memory locations. If we see one uh, program where one pointer pointing to more than one variable. Here with the main statement, main function, we have declared three variables a, b and c and it is initialized with, with values 30, 40 and 50. And in teacher star p is a pointer, it is uh, declared and with the initialization statement p equal to ampersand a in the sense the a's address is stored in p variable. Now the value of a is printed as what it is printing star p it is nothing but here it prints the value 30 and the p equal to ampersand b that is here it prints the value present under that b that it is currently having 40 and p equal to ampersand c and uh, we have done the uh, initialization here with that statement uh, after execution of the statement if we execute the value of c it will print the value as 50. These are the different uh, ways how we can uh, refer three different variables with the same pointer variable but the initialization is differs in each statement that is first P is set with the address of A and next P is set with the address of B and next P is set with the address of C. And how these pointers and functions are connected? In the previous uh, session, I have already discussed about pointers uh, concept with the swapping of two numbers when we discuss call by value and call by reference. Oh, this concept is already discussed with a same example that is we are referring the pointer star p and star q here and we are passing the pointer to the function exchange and in the exchange function we are trying to exchange the values present in those pointers 
and after that we are printing the values onto the screen before and after that it will be displaying the changed values because here we are passing the address of the variable and it will be referred to the value stored under those pointer under those address uh, so here the changes are done to the actual values and here even there's a formal values will get reflected into actual values since we are passing the address and how we can perform the arithmetic operations with the pointers here there is a formula to increment operators on pointer that is the pointer value is current value of the pointer plus integer number into size of the data type if you look into the example here we have defined the ptr as a pointer variable and which will hold integer values and if suppose ptr is set with 1000 then if we mention ptr plus plus what will be the output ptr plus plus here is a post uh, increment operator here it will increment the value by 1 normally that is ptr is a current uh, value of the pointer plus integer number with the statement ptr plus plus here it indicates ptr plus 1 that is 1 is the integer number it contains 1 into size of the int size of the int either it will be 2 or 4 byte depending on the system now if we consider it as a 2 with this uh, formula we can calculate the actual final value of the pointer as 1000 plus 1 into 2 so it is computing it as a 1002 we take one more example we have defined here the floating pointer and if pointer value is 1000 here one major change is size of the float is 4 it will get reflected onto the final computation of the pointer value we can perform the pointer addition with the same ex uh, formula what we discussed if you look into the example program int a comma star p is defined and p is set with the ampersand of a and the value of the pointer p before addition what it prints here percentage u percentage u is the special format specifier which is used for displaying the address and the p equal to p plus this will print that is we are trying to increment the pointer value with how much 5 with that statement if you look into the example here the integer number that we need to refer here is 5 into size of and data type that we refer here is a flow of integer that is 2 bytes and uh, here current value of the pointer is uh, referred as a whatever the address uh, that is referring say for example here in this case 1000 plus integer number it is 5 into size of the data right if we take uh, the size of the integer as 2 5 or uh, 2 is a uh, 10 and it will be computing and here it uh, uh, referred the size of the integer as 4 bytes that's why it is uh, referring the final value as 1024 this is how the pointer addition will be done and pointer subtraction if we do in the similar way then it will be 10024 and it will be decremented by 2 and pointers and arrays if we refer this is how we can access array elements reading an array printing an array all these we will be discussing with a lab program that i will be discussing in the upcoming sessions and pointers and the character string if we refer the pointers with the character string that is we are defining character that is with the star a so this a is now acting as a character pointer and we can store 
star a with any value like this so that we can refer that hello with the pointer character that is a this is how we can make use of the pointers Thank you. welcome back to the session the previous lecture video i have already discussed about pointers in detail with example programs now we'll see what is meant by a pointer to pointer pointer that points to another pointer then we call it as a pointer to pointer if we look into the example about the declaration first if we see the syntax data type here has to be mentioned and then since we are referring pointer to pointer this we are mentioning by using double asterisk symbol and then specifying the pointer name and in the initialization step we are mentioning the pointer name and address of another pointer name if we look into this what is meant by a pointer to pointer we are creating a pointer variable that will be pointing to another pointer variable and which will hold actually the value we see here this value is is a variable which will hold the actual value c and it contains the address as 800 and this 800 is stored in a pointer variable p2 and this is now p2 is acting as a pointer to value variable and this p2 is having the address 500 and this 500 is stored in one more pointer variable p1 and this p1 is pointing to p2 and p2 is actually pointing to value indirectly even this p1 is also pointing to value this is how pointer to pointer if we look into the example here next uh, the pointer to pointer here we are using a as a variable and we have declared star p as a pointer variable and the star star q this double asterisk symbol will refers to pointer to pointer that is the star q is pointing to star p here and the star q is actually uh, that is uh, actually referring to star p now a is having the value 10 and p is storing address of a and q is having address of p this is what we refer as a pointer to pointer that is this q is holding the address of p that's why in order to specify that we are using double asterisk symbol and the output it uh, with the statement star star q as we seen in the previous uh, session the star will uh, retrieve the value stored in the pointer here if we use star star variable name then which will store uh, refer the value which is present in the pointer to pointer variable if we look into here a is having 10 and uh, p equal to address of a and uh, then address of p is referred and with the star q it is referring to address of a and star star q it is referring to the value stored in that address it is 10 if we see one more example a is having 10 and we have defined star p that same example here it is defined with the slight changes integer star p and the uh, integer star star q is defined as a pointer to pointer and p is having address of a and q is having address of p that is we have defined the pointer variable here star p and one more pointer to pointer variable that is star star q and p is having address of a and q is having address of this p if we look into the diagrammatic representation a is having 10 
with the memory location as 200 and the next B, P is having the now 200 is getting stored in P as a value that is what we mentioned here as a pointer and uh, this Q is a is also a pointer which will hold the address of the this P variable that is 3000 that 3000 is stored in q variable now this is how this pointer to pointer will work then is the actual variable that we are referring whose address we are storing in p and p's address is stored in q this is q is acting as a pointer to point because the p is normal uh, initially pointer and for that we have created one more pointer if we start printing the values now a will print 10 and star p will print the value what is present in this uh, p that is 2000 and uh, star sorry uh, star p will be referring to the value stored in the p address what is that 2000 address that is 10 and if we want to fetch the value stored in a we have to make use of star star cubes this first star cube will be referring to value stored in the pointer variable that is p 2000 and under 2000 this 10 we need to refer that we can perform by using two stars and uh, this is how we can make use of pointer to pointer and what is the difference between pointer variable and normal variable this is a pointer variable holds the address normal variable actually holds the data the general format we use a pointer variable is a we are making use of the start symbol whereas in the normal variable we are not making use of start symbol and while initializing in the pointer variable we are using ampersand symbol it will assign the value to a pointer name and in the normal we are just making use of equal to symbol and the variable is essential to access the data and uh, here the normal variable data can be accessed without dereferencing the normal variable and if you list out the advantages of the pointers this pointer provides the direct access by using the address operator we can in particularly refer any of the address contents and uh, the memory required here is much less reduces the complexity of the program and it provides the alternate way to access a array elements as well and uh, this can also be used to pass the information back and forth between calling function and call function and if you look into the disadvantages of the pointer the first and uh, foremost this is not a very good uh, option not so safe and it is insecure because the values of other variable can be accessed without the permission. That is by using the star operator we can access the values stored in those variables. Those are all possible. And if we are not initializing the pointers that may cause the program to crash. It will become a dangling pointer and it is not clear way to point it that need to be safeguarded pointers are slower than the normal variable because it contains the address of the variable if pointers are updated with the incorrect values and it may lead the memory corruption so it need to store the where it deals majorly three different types of preprocessor directives. What is meant by this preprocessor directive? This preprocessor is a, actually the program that processes the 
So, before it passes to the compiler. Normally, the compiler will process the code. Here, if we are mentioning any preprocessor directly, this preprocessor program will process those codes and then it will be transferred to the compiler. And execution will be done before the program is compiled. So, here by using preprocessor directives, the execution will be much faster. Here we are making use of three different types of preprocessor directives. First one, macro substitution directives, file inclusion directives and compiler control directives. We will see types with the example codes. First one, macro substitution directives. This uh, macro substitution is a process where an identifier in the program is replaced by a predefined string. That is, there will be a predefined string we need to mention by using the hash defined keyword and then that will be getting replaced wherever it finds the identifier that we use to refer that. We look into this, all the preprocessor directives are beginning with hash symbol. Hash and define is the keyword that it uses and identifier is a special name it makes use to and the string is a string which we pass. And we'll see three different types of this macro substitution. First one simple macro, argumented macro and nested macro. With the simple macro, we are making use of the keyword define and directly we will make use of the identifier thing and then we will make use of the Wherever in the program it uh, sees P will be replaced with the play point one four. Same way, one more example hash define max 500 and max is a string and 500 is the identifier. Wherever it sees 500, it um, max it will be replaced by 500. Macros with the arguments here we make use hash define and identifier and in the arguments we will pass two uh, parameters f1 and f2 act as a parameters and that will be referred by using string we look into the example hash defined cube of x and this cube of x are defined as x into x into x so just by calling cube of x it indirectly refers to x into x into x and the nested macro here it, there is a one macro defined inside the another macro if we see the example hash defined m5 that is wherever there is a m it will be replaced by 5 if we are making use of this uh, m in one more macro then it will become a nested macro if we look into the example hash defined num m plus 1 m refers to 5, five. and that is 6 is the value of num variable no, sorry num string here there is a one example program which will make use of this macros write a c program that finds the addition of two square numbers by defining the macro of all square of x square of x is a macro defined defined as n. We are taking the values of a and b and we are computing the values by making use of macro that we have defined. Square of a will be referring to x into x or nothing but a into a plus square of b is refers to b into that will compute the result and it will be stored in add. This is how it will be using the macro.
to make use in the program as two box side. The side refers to side into side into side. This is how we are uh, reducing the number of steps. Solution mark direct use. Here there are uh, two types. One is using hash include file name. This tells the compiler to include the file in the program. These are all what we have used from the day one when we begin with writing the program. That is, with this uh, file inclusion directive, we are implicitly adding the, the file which contains all those predefined uh, functions. Ash include stdio.h there. stdio.h refers to the file. If the file name is in the double quote, suppose if we are mentioning like this, then the file is searched in the current directory. If the program 1.c, if we mention like this, then within the current directory, it is going to search for that program 1.c and those contents are added to the code. Press in uh, hash include file name and that is what we normally use hash include stdio.hfp then it is not specific with respect to current directory. It will search in all the files, uh, all the directories present in the file system. Next type of uh, macro is a compiler control directory. That is, it is here the compiler will control the directories and allow to include some definition and head the files based on the condition. In that first one is if yandef. It is used to check if the macro is defined or not. That is, we can make mac, make use of this as if yandef and test is the name that we are defining. Hash define test 10 and 10 is the value stored now. And end if we are terminating this. And next one here we are using is if def. That is if def test. Test is a macro that we are using. And uh, with the undef statement, uh, we are uh, trying to. Uh, here uh, with the undef statement, we are trying to uh, re go to the. That is uh, if we are defined, there's a. Uh, macro we are try, trying to de-refer it by using under and uh, so test is no more referred as a macro if we look into the next type that is uh, we are using hash if hash else and hash end if these are the three different kinds of uh, macros that we use with uh, checking the condition and uh, printing hash else and hash end if. And uh, if we look into the next example, these are all uh, simple. And uh, here we are defining the max as a one of the uh, macro which is having the value as 100. It displays as false. And uh, here with this, we are trying to find the with the previous program we are trying to find the number is even or not and in this we are just trying whether that max value is 100 or not and with the next one here uh, with if that we are trying to define the max and we are trying to print max is defined we are trying to print the One more example here with the we are trying to de refer the macro that we have defined. This is an example for different types of macros. Three different types of the subcategories are present in macros, which are used in the program to uh, benefit with these. That is, program will become more readable and easy to understand. Program can be easily modified or updated. And uh, this is easy to portable as uh, because 
it is easy to compile the program in different execution platform and program becomes very efficient to use since we are using the macros these are the some of the advantages of using macro for listening this completes your module 5 so in the series of lecture videos first about the contents of the module 2 in your uh, C programming for problem solving subject and next to module 3, module 4 and module 5 contents. Any doubts are there, please try to put a comment. Thank you for listening.